Um, so we are going to move on to town council questions, beginning with Ward 2, Bridget Hayes and Ben Summy. If you'll come up, please. Welcome. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for having us. Well, Bridget, we'll be getting with you. Uh, the first question, please introduce yourself and state the key points of your campaign. One minute. Hi, I'm Bridget Hayes, running for town council, uh, ward number two. So um, I grew up in Brookville, and um, I actually graduated from Franklin County the first year it was open. So um, after high school, I joined the Army and um, eventually went to Indiana University and graduated, and after that I went active duty. So um, I just retired from active duty after 28 years um, in 2019, and I moved home. Uh, the reason I moved home is because, you know, this is where I grew up and I, you know, I've, I've lived basically a life of service to our country and I just want to continue that to, uh, with the town of Brookville. Um, uh, just a little bit about me, I've been on the campaign trail and I get a lot of questions, who's your mom, who's your grandma? My mom's name is Barbara Hayes, my grandma is Martha Fritz, I live on 6th and Franklin. <laughs> so, Ten seems, seconds. Seems to be a typical um, question. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Ben, same question. Please introduce yourself and state the key points of your campaign. Uh, hello, my name is Ben Summy. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank you all, Mick, and what I wanted to put this on. Uh, I'd like to start off telling you three things about myself. One, I'm brutally honest. Always have been. And anybody, anybody who knows me will tell you that. And uh, it's cost me a little bit, a few times a foot and mouth disease, I joke. Uh, secondly, uh, you know, I grew up in a like Bridget, I grew up in a military home and it taught me something that everybody has a role. And third, I, uh, I spent the better part of my, my adulthood working in Brookville. Uh, Burkhart's, Bill Burkhart was my grandpa, and my other grandpa was Howard Summy as in Summer Photography. And I spent the last uh, 12 years of my life working at uh, plumbing in Brookville. And I, I've always said, unless you're uh, willing to step up in the seat, uh, don't complain. Here I am sitting in the seat. So thank you all. Thank you. Ben, we'll begin with you with the next question. What experience do you have that makes you qualified for this position? Uh, I'd like to say that I know people well, and uh, I know Brookville well. I've grown up here, my whole family was a big part in you know, Brookville for many years, so I believe that gives me a good foundation to work with uh, and a good direction to go. Bridget, same question. What experience do you have that qualifies you? Well, I think the good thing is that you don't actually have to qualify for this job. You just have to be a citizen that lives here. So I think I'm qualified there, thank goodness, for the founding fathers. Um, I do have experience, though, that, that helps my leadership experience with the Army for 28 years is obviously going to translate and be a plus um, while serving for the board and serving the residents of uh, Brookville. I mean, I've, I've been um, serving the, the country for so long, it's, it's just ingrained in me to not think about myself first, but to think about my community, and that's what I'd like to do for Brookville. And also, I've, I've just lived a life of service even after I retired. Um, I've been involved in the American Legion, the VFW, uh, the Daughters of Isabella. We make funeral lunches uh, for families that are grieving. And so I've really, really made it a point to be a part of this town in, in other service areas. And I think uh, this, this position um, on the town council is just the, the next step to give back even more. In addition, um, I have communication skills and I'm not scared to answer any question very bluntly. So I think Ben and I have that in common. That's good. Um, I think that um, it's easy for me to explain things to people and you know look at all the data and then be able to express it to someone who doesn't know. And I think that that's what elected officials should be able to do is explain maybe complicated issues in a way that people can understand and give you feedback so that you can also represent their interests. And I think communication is something that definitely qualifies me for this job. Thank you. Bridget, we'll start back with you. If you received a million dollar grant to use for the city any way you wanted, what would you do with it and why? Okay, uh, let's see. Maybe I would probably start with um, like in, improving the retaining walls that are going down from the hill into the valley. Those look like they probably need some help. Um, you know, 
Brookville has, uh, maybe I'd help pay off some of the golf course. <laughs> um, so, uh, I, I guess the only other thing I would do is really kind of invest in small business um, here in Brookville. So a lot of the things that people talk about is Main Street Brookville and the vacant storefronts. And a lot of people have a lot of, idea, of ideas on what to do and how to get people in there. And I really think an investment in just the people of Brookville in, in helping them understand that they can start a small business and, and have it on Main Street. You know, I know a lot of people are talking about you know, getting jobs and manufacturing in here, but why don't we just invest in our neighbors who have this great idea, who do this little thing on, on the internet and sell it? Well, maybe, maybe we could help them open up a storefront instead and maybe employ you know, their family and maybe they can make enough money on the storefront, in the storefront to support their family. I mean, that's really where an investment in just the people of Brookville is where I would probably try to put a lot of that money. Thank you. Ben, I was skipping you on questions. I think it's because Brian Noah came up and said, my mom was so proud of me that she was about to cry. And then I skipped someone else again, so thanks, Mom. Um, ben, so we'll go back to you, and you'll have two questions in a row. My apologies. Uh, what experience do you have that you feel qualifies you for this, this position? Uh, I've been in Brookville my whole life. I've been plumbing here from the moment all my adulthood, and I believe that it gives me an ability to understand you know, a lot of people will talk to you while they're working and you understand what the community wants and needs, especially in town, as well as, you know, you understand what people are concerned of. And I don't know how many homes I've went to and have you seen this or have you heard of this? And, you know, I, I've been able to uh, listen to a lot of things and it helps me understand more broadly about what Brookville needs to, to keep moving forward and help it. And, I understand more, I get a leaning ear of what people desire in one group though, and I think that's a great tool. And then the next question. If you received a million dollar grant to use for the city any way you wanted, what would you do with it and why? Well, uh, that's a tricky question. See, I, I would like to start with like Bridget here with the roadways, a lot of the roads are crumbling and I love the Main Street project, now I've cleaned up Main Street, but a lot of the back roads are starting to crumble off and, and a lot of potholes. And it's, it'd be nice to start cleaning that up and also opening up some, you know, helping incentives to get businesses back into Brookville and I think that'd be a wonderful place to start with a grant like that or with a million dollars like that. And, uh, it's kind of up in the air, I wouldn't know until I had it in my hands, kind of one of those hard questions. Thank you. Ben, this will be again for you. How do you t plan to involve residents from your your ward? Well, like I said before, I, uh, I work in a lot of houses. I, I go to five or six houses a day. Uh, many of you in here know me. I've been working on your furnaces, your toilets, and Lord knows what else. Uh, and uh, so I get to get to hear people. Like I said, a leading ear. So that's one tool I love, and that's what made me decide to do this, was I saw there's a position that needed to and I realize I get to have a better ear hearing what people want, need, and it helps me help Brookville move forward. Thank you. Mrs. Hayes, how do you plan to involve residents from your ward? Uh, well, I have a Facebook page. I've got my email address and my phone number on all, all my um, um, advertising for the candidacy, so anybody can contact me if they need to. Um, but. What I've really found in, in campaigning around is that there are some people who have a lot to say, but they just don't reach out to actually be heard. But when they're asked, hey, what do you think we should do? Boy, they have a lot of great suggestions. And so I'm, I'm keeping track of all those people that talk to me on the campaign and you know, really you know, spend some time. And I'm gonna go back to them and say, hey, you know, it's been six months. What do you think about this? Or hey, this issue is coming up. Um, I'm not going to just insulate myself with just my, my BFFs or just my family. There's a lot of people in Brookfield who have a lot of great ideas, um, and I'm going to reach out to them if, if I know who they are, and I've, I've been meeting so many of them on the campaign. This question will begin with you, Bridget. Do you think our Main Street is healthy and successful? If not, what would you do to change that? Right, so no, I mean... It is, it's okay, uh, but there's, uh, I think today we found out there's uh, 14 still vacant um, storefronts and a lot of challenges with the owners of those storefronts. 
And so, um, like I said before, I just I think that investing in the people in Brookville, if they have great ideas that they're doing out of their garage, um, I, I read an article about how one town actually had a grant program and they would give people uh, money for the first year of rent to kind of give them a break and get them started and going. Um, I think that would that would be extremely helpful. Um, I do support the Main Street in, um, in putting um, nice things in the, in the windows of those empty storefronts so at least it doesn't look like it's a ghost town. Um, but I think we definitely need to take a step further in really encouraging putting a huge effort into the small business ideas of people of Franklin County. Thank you. Mr. Sunny, do you think our Main Street is healthy and successful? If not, what would you do to change that? I think it is. I think uh, Main Street has improved a lot, especially in the last 10 years or so. Uh, I remember back 20 years ago, you used to walk down Main Street and every business was booming. And then it died off for a few years there during the recession. And now I see it coming back. I, I grew up here like many of you, and I'm glad to see it starting to get better. Now, as well as I also don't like seeing the empty storefronts like uh, not to name so many, but the old who cares or or uh, all those businesses now that are being used for the arts project, I'd like to see them turn back into stores. You can't even buy blue jeans in Brookville anymore. I'd like to be able to buy a pair of blue jeans on Main Street again. But I, uh, I think that Brookville is definitely going in the right direction as of right now. Thank you. <clears throat> ben, what is the single greatest challenge Brookville faces and how would you address that? Growth. I I see that Brookville is getting bigger. It's getting more people in here, and it's going to continue to grow. People have people. Let's we keep repopulating. And so I noticed the housing market in Brookville. It's, the house goes in the market. It's gone. So one of the greatest things is we need more houses. We need uh, we need more business in Brookville and more jobs. So I see that's probably one of the bigger things that Brookville will need, but it is continuing to prosper, and I, I must add, it's enjoyable to watch. And Ben, how would you, is there anything else that you would like to share with constituents on your role? Oh, I'm sorry, did I skip you? I'm sorry, Bridget. Brookville's biggest challenge? Yeah, that is it. I'm gonna repeat the question for okay. you. You got it? Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, it's, it, I don't mean to keep repeating, but I, I do think the biggest challenge is, is uh, Main Street and the empty storefronts, which I kind of already talked about. But um, I just think that this community is, is absolutely amazing, and I'm proud to be a part of it. I'm proud to come back home and bring all the experience that I have from um, my service uh, for the country back here and um, put it to work because these uh, the, the people that live here are amazing, and I love Brookville, and I, I want to definitely see uh, Main Street um, prosper as well. You're welcome. And in closing, what would you like to share with constituents? Yeah, it's you. Back to you. Sorry. I guess I, what I want to say is what I didn't answer the first question. Sorry. Never done this before. Um, so the three main focus areas for me is uh, my leadership uh, that I bring in from the Army uh, and my, uh, year, uh, my year in combat in Iraq, um, my uh, communication skills and my ability to communicate with anyone to be able to um, explain a problem and, and hear a solution um, is something that I feel very strongly about. And also, um, I know everyone talks about transparency, I guess that's a key word, but um, I feel that what's done in the dark should be brought to the light. And I think that public business should be conducted in public. And I think that questions from the public that are asked should be answered. And if they can't be answered right then, I'm gonna do everything I can to get with that person after the meeting or call them, make contact with them, um, because I think that it's important that our citizens know that the First Amendment is alive and well in Franklin County, and I definitely will not stop that from ever happening again. Thank, Thank you. you. In closing, uh, Mr. Sumney, what would you like to share with constituents? I'd like to share that, you know, I, I'm grateful for everybody who came out tonight and, I'm grateful for being able to be able to have an open forum like this and to share and get to know the people. And I, I'd like to share that Brookville will continue to prosper. I'd like to have your vote, and if I don't, that's okay. Like I said before, Brookville will continue to prosper. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful town, and it always will be. 
Thank you. Thank you both. You may be seated.